I at first I didn't love Grand Forks when I first came here. I used to go to Minneapolis every weekend because that's where I grew up. But now this place kind of grew on me, and I like Grand Forks a lot because it's like a family town. Like, I feel like I can relate to the families here because they have they have their own families at a young age, and um, you would see like a mom and a dad and their kids in a park. Where in Minneapolis you would never see that. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a good community. I like to go to the movies, um, bowling, just, just hang out with my son. Uh, in the summertime, take him to the park. He's just not too young, but uh, go to Starbucks with my mom. She loves that. And I can relate to the new people in a lot of different ways because I've been in a refugee camp before. And when they come here, like, they have a different perception of America, and then they're just there's more reality for them. Especially Grand Forks. Like if they were to arrive in Minneapolis, it, it would have been a little bit different. There would have been more broader Somali community and more of people that have businesses and things like that that can welcome them to America that speak the same language. But here they kind of have to start from scratch. There is no explanation for them. They just want to usually go to Minneapolis. They're like, we just need to get out of here. But we convince them that it's a great community here and that they can find jobs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the jobs are open to hire. New Americans that don't, that barely speak English, and they'll work with them. Like the American students that are in high school, it's, life is already difficult in high school. So for them to see like people they've never seen or know anything about, of course they're gonna be kids and be curious and not be very nice. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, I, like I, I told Cynthia, like I wish they can um, not do like seminars, but like do like a open introduction kind of thing. Like, hey, there's refugees coming to Grand Forks. This is who they are. This is the struggles they've been through. Like, just have a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. Like, educate them a little bit. Because they're kids at the end of the day. Like, if they were to ask their parents, their parents would be like, we don't know. Well, I don't, we don't even know why they're coming here, you know? Mm -hmm. The parents don't even know sometimes. Or if they know, they don't want to, they don't feel like it's important to explain to them. Properly ask they a don't, question. And they don't know how to react to them. They're just like, why are they here? Like, what, what are they, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of them thought that refugees just come here and they get like, free money and they like they don't know anything about refugees. So what I did was, it was I put them in like four different, six different groups and each group I exposed them to like two different families, mm -hmm. refugee families. And they were surprised to find out that yeah. when refugees first come here, they um, first of all have to pay back the money that they came here, like their Take flight care. money. Um, and they have to find a job, they have to, start. they have to do a lot, they have to do everything an American person can do, but twice the, the hard work they put in. Um, so now they understand that.